Good morning, Tarot Sphere. It's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures. Beaker and I <clears throat> got a surprise in the mail last night, and it's the threads of fate. Ah, I'm so excited to be unboxing this oracle. Um, the only thing I've done so far is just cut the tape on the box, so that way I could have an easier time opening it. I'm really, really excited. Uh, the shipper box is beautiful. I love when decks come shipped in boxes because it means less damage. Um, also, it's a black mailer, very thick, and they have embossed their um, hi, uh, they have embossed their uh, logo on the box. It's gorgeous. I don't know if you get there. You go. That's probably better to see. Um, I'm almost sad that the, I'm not sad that the box is that pretty, but it's just kind of like, oh, it's so much, I just, I wish it wasn't a mailer box. So I wish there was a box inside of a box. That way this box would be just as beautiful. Um, but <clears throat> yay, mailer box. Hi, Beaker. Beaker is going to be very active this morning, it looks like. So we're going to give it an open. And the inside of the mailer is beautiful. So this is... Ta-da! It is a um, a purple print, a purple print on the inside, a couple of um, cards, and what looks to be um, a, a bracelet and some crinkle paper to nestle the deck. So let's go ahead and start pulling this all out, shall we? We've got a gem bracelet, very cute, a little small. If you're a bigger girl, this is gonna. There's a little, a few little gaps on there. Um, looks to be, looks, oh, what'd you jump in for? Looks to me to be amethyst, maybe some quartz. Very cute though. I'm probably going to restring them on something a little more sturdy than the elastic as well. Maybe something with a, um, with a slip so that way you can tighten it and tie it. Maybe more mandala style. I'll bet if I hand knotted this, it would fit my wrist a little bit better. So we'll, we'll do that, but it's gorgeous and a nice little bonus to see in there. And then what are you jumping for? Is a bracelet scaring you? Okay. We will, we will we'll put that evil bracelet away. And then we've got a postcard. It says weave the threads of your fate. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, we hope you love what you receive. Please share your journey with us on Instagram, hashtag fate weavers just a little social media uh, boost right in there. And then caring for your deck. And then a little bit about their book of days. Um, I did not order the book of days. So this is, this is a good twofer, but I didn't order the book of days. Uh, the deck we recommend keeping your cards in their box or a silk bag. Do not shuffle the way you would a deck of playing cards. They should be shuffled back and forth between your hands. So no rifle shuffling probably going to run a full shovel. Um, and then try to avoid getting them wet. Moves coffee up for a sip. And then to the side. Um, and then it is normal for the gold foil to get scratched or show wear over time in some spots. It is resilient, but don't rubber scrape it besides one shuffling. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty normal for gilding, which is why I have mixed feels on gilding a deck. Is just like one of those that looks really pretty when the deck is new, but is it practical over time? Hmm. Anywho, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and just so you can see the box is nestled in more crinkle. There's crinkle on the bottom and um, it is printed all the way through. You could totally, I'm going to probably wind up reusing this to gift something. Tis the season. Am I right? So we're, we'll go ahead and put this shipper box over here. Uh, yep, yeah, right there is fine. And then we have the deck box, which is sizable. Um, there are no finger cutouts to help you open it, but that is all right. Do, 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 do. That's just such a nice little design thing when some, sometimes when that happens. just We'll see how easily the deck slides apart. I'm just cutting open the plastic film so we can get the film off. Woohoo! My favorite part. Speaker, do you like that part too? Do you want help? Speaker's going to help. Do you want to help me? Yeah. All right. So going to go ahead. We got the plastic off and the box has that nice matte rose petally feel. 
Um, it has been uh, embossed in, is that gold or silver? That's gold. So it's been, it's got like the gold foil stamping on the front with a mountain and an eyeball and some stars and stuff, it looks like. We've got a hand with a feather on the side, a hand with, some, with a sword, a hand, so interesting, and then a hand with a crystal. It looks to me like there might be a little bit of a tarot vibe going on here. Uh, wand, dagger, feather, and plant, that's earth, air, fire, water, swords, cups, um, swords, cups, wands, and uh, coins. So we've opened the box. The inside is finished just in white. Sturdy cardboard, very nice. It did take a little while to slide off. So this matte rose petal feel. Hi, Tiffy, how are you? Um, and then the soft rose petal makes for a bit of a difficult opening. Just be patient with it. I just kind of did like one of these. There we go, all right. And then you're faced with the book. Oh, the back of the box, by the way, you guys, has pictures of the cards, a little description. Hi, um, Beaker. <laughs> pictures of the box, uh, pictures of the cards, um, description, and social media link. No barcode or anything like that. I know some people like when there's no barcode on their on their box. Oh, no. I just lifted the book out, and look, look how the cards. Oh, I hope nothing's damaged. Okay. So this is the book. Let's go ahead and take a peek. This also has that rose petal matte feel to it. And it is foil stamped. Let's see. Threads of Fate. Da, 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 da. Thank you for supporting the Threads of Fate Oracle deck. Decent size, easy on the eyes. Um, there's an about the deck. It's to help you establish a deeper con a deeper relationship with yourself, your intuition, and all the allies, guides, and spirits you may work with. The most important thing is that you feel empowered and unlock your personal medicine. Uh, total of 55 cards, 32 elemental cards, broken up into four, four suits, earth, air, fire, water. And in the booklet, you will find... Um, You'll find each of these cards has an overall message as well as an associated herb, crystal, and animal. And then there are 23 throne cards. So that sounds kind of like an arcana. Hi, Stella. How are you? It sounds a bit like an arcana to me. Maybe one, like it's one more card. Um, so it sounds like they went for tarot, but took out the, um, it, it, it seems like they, they, you know, they went a little bit for tarot, but they took out the uh, court cards, it seems. Um, each card was created intuitively. I'm sure they'll be different, but that that's kind of the structure. Um, let's see. The illustrations were, ow, Beaker. Um the illustrations were channeled. The digital art layers behind the illustrations were made as a reflection of the many messages it holds. Hi, Beaky. Yeah, yeah. He's such a ham, you guys. Um, this deck is a tool that allows you to tap into your soul wisdom, divine counsel. This is being with your deck. So there's an intro, being with your deck. Um, the ritual of using your cards, cleansing, and... Uh, storing <clears throat> and then some spreads it looks like so we've got a few spreads hi, yeah that's my that hi creative how are you apparently I'm going to be doing this one-handed you guys all right so there's a mapping your internal landscape spread that's a four card spread there is a mirror work spread there is an inquiry spread. That's another four card spread. The mirror work so, uh, is a five card spread. And then there's a define the situation, a four card spread. So I really enjoy when, um, when Oracle decks, because they tend to not be, oh, there's some smuts, some schmutz in my book. Um, <laughs> try to, uh, ow, I don't know if you guys can see the schmutz. Oh, that's not a, that's not part of the image. Oh no. Oh God, gross. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, 
I like when Oracle decks, especially ones that are limited in the number of cards, like, um, you know, this is a 55 card Oracle, so it's not a small Oracle deck by any means, but it's certainly not a 72 card deck. I like when they suggest spreads that kind of rein in the number of cards that you use, um, because at some point, mathematically speaking, you just take all the chance out of, um, you know, the, 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 you take the ratio of cards to questions out of the out of the whatever. Um, I get doing like grand tableaus and stuff, but I mean, if you're just doing a spread and you've got a 55 card deck and they recommend 12 cards, that's that's a little, that's up there. That's 20% of the cards. Anywho, um, so this is the earth. Is that, hold on, is that the, oh, okay. So, oh, oh beaker. He just went for the guidebook, you guys. So here we're into the meat of the um, card meanings in the book. Hi, Nat. How are you? <clears throat> we're into the meat of the card meanings in the. No, you stay away from. You stay away from this. Um, <laughs> they <clears throat> don't have pictures of the cards for reference. So that's fine. I mean, you can use the card as reference, but as a study, um, <clears throat> when studying when studying a guidebook, sometimes I'll depending on how I'm going to use the deck. This is when I'll probably just jump in. But sometimes for my night reading, I do like to just take the guidebook and go ahead and just read it. And it's nice to have at least a little reference for the card um, picture. It's not the first guidebook that hasn't come with photos of the picture and it won't be the last I'm sure or photos of the deck uh, of the, each ind individual cards and I'm sure it won't be the last but sometimes that's nice like even just a little doodad up here to remind you like which card you're looking at and then let's see so each card yep each card has the meaning and then here is What's going on with this? Yeah, okay. So it's not a two page, but this is from the previous card. Um, so each card has a meaning and there's an exercise to go along with each with each card that you pull, probably like a meditation or a journaling. This is um this is an energy scan. Kind of cool. And then, like they said, you get an animal. This card is armadillo, and then you have an herb, yarrow. And then a crystal, black tourmaline. So you get a little bit about each card. It looks like it's just enough to be a jumping off point and, um, you know, maybe incorporate so that herb or that food or that crystal into your day to help you connect the energy of the card better. Um, yeah, this is a pretty decent guidebook. It's not too overwhelming. It's not, it's, you know, this is an easy read. All right, so anywho, I will go ahead and move on from there. So, oh, and we should met. So that there's that's the earth, the um, the the element suits, and then they get into the uh, throne cards. Do, 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 do. Um, so in the throne cards, so the throne cards you don't get, and uh, you don't really get. Uh, animals or herbs. Sometimes you get the occasional journal question, it looks like, but otherwise you're just getting death, the explorer, fate, love, magic. I'm going to, I'm going to have to study these and see how closely they, um, <clears throat> see how closely they wind up lining up with tarot. That'll be an interesting, that'll, that'll be interesting to see how it works out. And you do get, so card feature, all right, so you get a little blurb on each card about um, you get a little bl uh, blurb on each card about the person that shows up on these cards. So, um, like for example, on the Sage card, uh, Aaron Telford is a certified breathwork teacher and healer, acupuncturist, Reiki master, and herbalist. One of her favorite things is to guide people to look within, open their hearts, and heal their relationships with themselves. And then you get her website and her um and her instagram so there's a little bit <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see 
I like how they included peers in the deck. It'll be interesting to see whether or not um, that makes it easier or harder to connect with knowing who those people are. Um, could go either way. All right, so we're pulling this out of there. This deck insert is oddly familiar. It's felty up here, and then it's the um, foamy. If you have the, uh, what is it, Stella, um, the the spirit, not spirit de la lune. Um, yeah, spirit de la lune. If you've got the if you've got the, the the that moon deck, this is the same. I think they use the same people to box. It's a nice little foamy insert. It's secure in there. It's glued in. Uh, there is high beaker. There is a little bit of <laughs> there's a little bit of space between the. Um, I find with my spirit de la lune, um, some of the cards slide under at this point. So probably like a little piece of cloth or something is going to wind up going in there just between the insert and the card, but it does otherwise keep the cards pretty secure. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and slide that little doodad off. The cards are, they're like, um, they remind me of, they're not big. They're, they're not, they're Oracle sized, but they're not, they're, they're, like a big tarot-y, oracle-y size. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they would be the same. I wish I had it, but I don't. Around the same size as the first um, edition of the, oh, what is it? The Akash, the Star Child, the first edition of the Star Child. I know, he just really, mm, mm, he's a very busy boy. He just wants attention. And also to eat my buttons, which we're not going to let him do this morning. Um, <clears throat> So the, the card size isn't too bad. The card stock, again, is that rose petal mat feel. The back of each card is foil stamped, and the front of each card, ow, beaker, ow. The front of each card is foil stamped as well. He's so busy. This is the alchemist. So it looks like we're going to open with the throne cards, you guys. Um, ow, beaker, ow, beaker. That is not nice. You're not being nice. No. Are we going to? No, we're going to open, so the, yeah, no, the throne cards are in the back. I was mistaken. Okay. I'm going to separate out the throne cards for right now. Yep, the ones with the people. All right. Okay. Ow. So this, uh, it's a very um, purpley, blue, um, dreamy, amethyst style, like if you were to assign a crystal to it, amethyst and fluoride, I think would be the two that I would assign. Um, very reminiscent to me of the, oh, do I have it? The inner star Oracle, uh, not in size. The inner star is a little bit bigger. Hi, I need my arm back. Um, don't you, don't you go for these. I'm gonna, I will know. I will put you right back in your cage. Um, just with the, the way that there's like the dreamy pictures in the back as what, well, and then another layer of, um, another layer of more picture. Whether or not there's too much picture on there is the question. Um, it's not too bad. I would uh, probably would have been a little better served to have made the background a little more faded. So the uh, no, 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 no. Down here, it starts to get a little muddled with all the mountains. Um, the middle's not so bad because it's lighter. Yes, the gilding is fantastic. So the gilding is a matte gold gilding, um, which I'm not sure why they're worried about it fading or, or whatever. Every deck that I have that is, don't you eat my buttons. I swear to goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not so sure why they're worried about the, um, I'm not so sure why they're worried about the uh, matte gold gilding because every deck that I have that has matte gold gilding holds up really well. It's really, it's really very hard to scratch. <laughs> you have to try to ruin matte gold gilding. Feels a little sticky though. I think this probably wasn't all the way dry when they put it in the, or maybe it's just, it's not my hands. My hands are clean. Um, so anyway. Oh, I love this card. So we get more of a pink hue here. 
Right, so maybe that first one was the one that was a little more, these are a little more clear. This is a beautiful one. Here we, we go away from that blue more into the green. This is the Ask Body with the Jaguar's head. And there is a forest in the background. It looks to me like a majority of the images are gonna be mirrored. So that way there's some symmetry in the pictures. And it looks like at least the animal from each one is going to be prominent. A dogo, a dogo card, hooray. This is connect to the heart. Aw, dogs do deserve that card. Connect to the heart. Dogs are just so good. All right. Oh, here's one for Beaker, dare to dream. Oh, this is a busy one. This is the death card. Let's see if I can get the sun to reflect that. Yeah, so you've got the death card. With the light hitting it and that gilding, it is beautiful. As soon as that goes away, it's just kind of not, it's just very muddled. That's amazing. So that light hitting that gilding is going to make all the difference in a reading, I think, is, you know, having it down on a desk where you can't really see it. I think doing this, this needs to be done at like a nice, brightly lit, you know, kitchen table with the sun coming through a window hitting the gilding. Um, I think you're going to get, you know, as if, at least if you're photographing it, it that's going to work way better in your favor with some of these cards. Um for those who love, hi, ow, stop it. Hi, ow, stop it. <laughs> um, hi, Crystal Mama, how are you? This is the Explorer with a, ow, compass and a heart at the bottom. Come on, Beaks. Beaker, I invited you here to be nice. So, you no, know, this is why I leave you in your cage most of the time. All right. Or I should say most of the time during during videos. There's some people in this one. Um, I wonder, if, I'm going to have to see in the guidebook if they mention who that is. He's not, well, he's always a little pain, Crystal Mama. He's always a little pain. Mm, but we love him. Um, so <laughs> it's interesting to see, because they put such a big emphasis on people in the deck later on. Uh, it's interesting to see them in the deck earlier. So I'm wondering if the owl, if the, um, what the thought process behind that was, and perhaps we'll read more in the guidebook about it. Do, do, do. Fabergé egg, please. Uh, <laughs> it's a Simpsons reference for those that don't know. Uh, Bleeding Gums Murphy lost, you know, fell from grace in the jazz music industry because he had he had a little problem and then they show him and he's like i'd like to buy another faberge egg please <laughs> so that one that one gives me a giggle and then here is oh i like this one this is the first time we really see a, like they're they're heavy-handed on the on the um the ink in this one first time we really see that see the imagery take forefront i really this is a very beautiful image And crows are just full of layers of symbolism. Somebody brought it up on a previous video, but crows are crows are vicious. And you know how I can tell this is a crow for those that don't know? Uh, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Crows have a square tail. Ravens do not. Ravens have a, like a tail that's kind of like beakers, long and pointy. Um, he says, don't touch my tail. So <laughs> crows have a boxy tail. They tend to be smaller. Ravens are solitary animals. Crows flock together. So that is how that's that's how you can tell a crow from a raven. They're both corvids, though. This is an oracle deck, Crystal Mama, but it seems to be closely following tarot structure. I like that one, the wolf on the mountain. Howling at the moon. I do love me some animal, some animal decks. Ooh, this is a ton of gil solid gilding again. We're seeing some interesting things being done with the gilding. Sometimes it's lined, sometimes it's solid, sometimes there's a lot, sometimes there's a little movement. 
This is an interesting one. What's in the background there? An industrialized city. Not like not like a heat, not like um not like a modern day one, but I can't tell I can't tell where that is. Just so you guys can maybe see it a little bit better. No, it's not going to focus. But yeah, there's some, it looks like a church or something in the background, a tower. I wonder where that is. I wonder if they'll say. Yeah, this definitely, they definitely put some thought into the structure of their deck. Um, so they've got, like I said, they've got earth, air, fire, water for the suits. Um, hi, Conjurer's Table. Good morning. How are you? They've got earth, air, fire, water for their suits. Oh, my beaker. Come on, man. Oh, my goodness. Stop it. Get back on my shoulder, you weirdo. All right. I'm going to switch hands because I can't hold up a... I don't have steady hands as it is, so I can't... Oh, there we go. He just wants a... He wants a... He wants a chin scratch. All right. Dolphins. Yeah, it's so far, it's a really nice presentation, Conjurer's Table, and really well thought out, too. Um, power for the bear. Mm, this one's a little Lisa Frank. It's a cat with a, <laughs> it's a cat with a, with a crystal. Reclaim, ow, ow, a beaker. That wasn't nice. Yes, it's the Threads of Fate Oracle deck for those that are just joining in. Um, so yes, this is a it's a cat with a crystal crown, and then there is a um, there's a lava flow and what looks to be like the skeleton of a tree that's caught on fire, but is now it's it's it gets burned out. But um, yeah, that one's that one's a little that one is a little Lisa Frank. <laughs> so we've got um, some swans. Or geese. I will, I'll have to take a look at the card. It's really hard to... That looks almost like a goose, though. But I'll bet you it's swans. You don't see geese too often in cards. They're not thought of as... Um, they're not usually thought of as spirity animals. Uh, then we've got poor geese. Poor underrated geese. And then we've got... Hi, Wizards Tower. How are you? And then we've got uh, Froggy. And... Another person on a card. Gonna have to see. Gonna check out who that is. Whether or not they mention the revolutionary. We've we've reached the suit of fire. It looks like. This is the sacred, sacred destruction. That seems a little. That seems a little repeat. Ow. I'm going to have to read that and reclaim. That seems to be a little, where are we reclaim? I can, I'm not going to, I can't, he's, she's starting to go after the cards. Um, seems like it seems it'll be different to see. It'll be interesting to see the difference between this and reclaim. Mm. Then we have, Oh, sacred sexuality. And then, Hey, come on you. Then we have the sage. It's interesting that they chose I'm trying to get the sage up. The sage up. So there is the sage page. <laughs> Hi! Stop! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Self love. Then we have a shadow card. I like the idea of the unfurling and then um, and then you know taking it places kind of ow imagery of the bat all wrapped up in itself and then with the wings spread out you know kind of like uh, let's maybe like you know let's keep a lid on this and then kind of like nope whoosh, all my shit um, as far as the shadow is concerned beaker you're not being very nice. Then we've got the um, chair wisdom card. Those are badgers. Yep. 
Oh, I thought they were bears, but they're badgers. I don't know how wise a badger is. Ow. And then this, you guys, this is the card that held it all up. Ow, Beaker, please, please do not. Please do not. I love you very much. All right. That hurt a lot. Okay. So this is the soul work card. And this is the card that held up production of the deck, you guys, because apparently, um, I'll have to check and see if that's on purpose or not, but it looks like some of the gilding might be missing off of one of my hexagons. Um, the hexagons came out a little more rounded than they had wanted originally in production of the deck, and they had to have the card redone. So um, this is one of the ones that held up production. And then, you know what, I'm going to keep this one aside. I want to see how well it fits in, having been a card that was cut and done after. Yes, Tammy Pie, you caught a big day. Um, and then we've got the Sovereign. Those are, that is an antler crown. It's, or, or it might be twigs. It looks to be antlers to me. Maybe twigs. Could go either way. And then Speak Truth. Oh, this is a beaker card. Oh, beaker. You have a beaker card. This is Speak Truth. And it is a parrot. Oh, my goodness. It should be the order from Alexa card. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but parrots are ordering stuff off of Alexa these days. Got to be careful about that. And it's not just one. There are several. Um, so this is the Speak Truth card. I wonder what that rock is above him. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll set this one aside. We'll take a good look at it too. Ha, huh? peeks and geeks. Yeah, you like a good scratch, huh? This is the Strength card. This one is heavy on both the ink and the gilding and the imagery. This is a very dark card visually. Um, yeah, it looks like they are borrowing heavily from tarot. Not a bad thing. We'll see. We'll see how it works out in the structure, in, in like the reading and the and in the guidebook and stuff. See what similarities they draw with strength and. Uh, this is the surrender card. Again, a very visually dark card. If you're going to photograph something like this, you want the light to be hitting the gilding. Otherwise, otherwise it's very muddled. Although I do like how when the light doesn't hit the gilding, you have the emergence of that, ow, that person who is, it looks like, it, uh, I think it's just a cloud, but it almost looks like a person that's like deep diving in a cenote or something. See? That's really cool. Yep, they're having Alexa play music. They're ordering their favorite stuff. Or they're ordering more of your favorite stuff. They're not, well, some parents would be smart enough to order their stuff if they knew what it was. Beaker, what would you order? Macadamia nuts. Beaker would order macadamia nuts. And Mambo number five a thousand times. All right, so this is the take risk card. And I believe this is the last of the suits. All right, and then we get to the um, the archetype, the, what do they call them? I forget, I already forgot, brain like a sieve. Um, these, I'm gonna call this the major arcana of the deck because that is basically what it is. There should be 23 of these. I have to count the cards and make sure I got them all. So that is a thing you guys always take. So I know a lot of people like to get their decks in. I see a lot of people like, oh, I got a deck and I'm waiting for Christmas to open it. and. While we are really close to uh, Christmas and Yule or uh, whichever it is you choose to celebrate, uh, some people will order decks and then wait like a month or two to open it and go through it. Always open your deck right away. Always check for damage. Always check for missing cards or repeat cards or whatnot. You just always want to make sure that um, you're getting exactly what you needed to get. But anyway... So the, cause if you wait, sometimes they're just kind of like, well, you waited too long. Most people will work with you, but some, some places are just kind of like, mm, no. So you've got the creator beaker. This, this is the one where every single card in this section features a person. Beaker is taking all of the attention, isn't he? Oh my goodness. Yeah. All of the attention, sir. Mm. All right, so this is the Magi card. I'm gonna do this single-handed again, because one hand on the card, one hand on the beaker. 
Yeah, this is very, that's, that would be the magician, the observer. I'm getting kind of a high priestess vibe from the outlaw, almost the antithesis to the, um, to the emperor or the hierophant, the pillar, you get another very high priestess vibe from. I can make videos of Beaker. <laughs> I, oh my God, those videos would mostly, would mostly be him like climbing all over me, you guys. This guy is, he's very busy toddler. Yes. So we've also got the seeker. The universe. Kind of a sub in for the world card, right? The void. I suppose that could be seen as either. Um, you could probably you could probably uh, tap in either uh, the death, uh, either death or um, not tower, but maybe devil for that one. There's there's a few you could tap in for that one, and then we've got the weaver. I would argue you could probably do Wheel of Fortune with that one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And then we've got Transmute. There's nobody in that one. I wonder if these got. Oh, uh, you know what? I think I got some of the um, some of the suits were a little mixed in. Well, there's no men in it. So to answer Crystal's, Crystal Mama's um, question, she said, um, does this give you a feminine vibe? And there's definitely no men in this deck. I'm not going to say it's overwhelmingly feminine, though. Um, somewhat balanced so far. This is definitely, it's a pretty deck. I would say that from a business marketing standpoint, this deck is definitely aimed at, at women. So far, there's been, you know, there's, Lots of imagery of women. Um, I don't know that I would call it a feminine, uh, like a divine feminine feel. This is versatility. And that is a hemp leaf. They're my people. <laughs> um, and then we've got... And then we've got... Um, this is the warrior. So while there is a woman on that card, which gives it kind of, and it's in pinks and it does give it a feminine vibe. You also have like ram's horns on a sword and it's called the warrior. Traditionally, you know, traditionally men went off to war. Um, so this is like a very masculine, ma like a divine masculine actionable card. Um, I am presently trying to, seek new words to replace divine masculine versus divine feminine. Um, I haven't really settled on anything yet, but I'm thinking, um, and I hate saying passive or aggressive. Um, I'm thinking actionable and restful will probably be my new two words for it. Um, to try and see if this is the wildling. And this, I don't know how I feel about this card. So it's a hair braid with a pair of scissors, as in they lopped off all their hair. Um, and traditionally, when a girl who has long hair comes in to work or school or wherever it is that you are, like, you know, she got long hair one day and she got short hair the next, unless she has donated it for, you know, unless she's like, I'm growing this out to donate it for Locks for Love. Um, <clears throat> chances are some shit's going down. <laughs> Girls don't just lop off all their hair for no reason. Um, run, run, motherfucker, run. That's all. That <laughs> Get out of the way. Oh, God. <laughs> Stuff's going down. Um, and then this one is withdraw. So, anywho. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oop, time for. <laughs> time for haircut. See you next Tuesday. Oh my goodness. Conjurer's table, it's funny. Uh, oh my goodness. I did not know you were a hairdresser, Conjurer's table, and you're not that far from me. Gonna have to look at your body of work. It is time for haircut. Surprise visit, maybe? Looking at you, kid. All right, so that would be the, um, so I did think that the suits were mixed in a little bit for me for this presentation. I think I'm gonna wind up doing, um, so I've been thinking about the way that I've been doing and approaching reviews and I'm going to be separating them into two columns, unboxing, first impressions, slash review. Um, so I will take some time to sit with this deck and, oh my goodness, speaker butt. Um, I'll take some time to sit with this. He's back. Um, I'll take some time to sit with this deck, uh, separate out the suits, really get a feel for it. Um, in the meantime, we're going to, oh my goodness, Beaky McGeeky. We're going to do a daily draw with it. We're going to see how it shuffles, all that good stuff. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Restful Fox card. That's a good one. Usually they're very, very busy like this one. So when they are resting, ow, ow, beaker. That's not nice. That's not nice. So I am revisiting, guys. I am revisiting. Um, I'm revisiting acne because beaker likes to take his little tongue and push all the dirt and oils into my pores. Don't you? You love doing that. Jerk. Jerk bird. Are you a jerk bird? Yeah. Also, he likes putting, nope, those are my buttons. So it shuffles okay. I'm rifle shuffling it. Sorry, Threads of Fate. Sorry, ladies who made the deck because, oh my goodness. Ow, ow, stop. No, ow, beaker. Ow, that hurts. Don't give me a haircut. Come on, stop it. Stop, stop. Sorry, you guys. All right. So it shuffles just fine. Hey, all right. No more shoulder. Get down. Oh my goodness. See, see what I deal with. All right. He's not going to get down. So it shuffles just fine. <laughs> and good morning, Veronica Jude. When did you sneak in there? When did you sneak in there? Oh my goodness. Didn't even see you pop in. Um, so shuffles just fine. Cardstock is how many? There are 55, Veronica. And they're divided into five sections, four elemental suits, one suit of archetypes slash uh, they're calling them, I think they're calling them creators or something like that. Um, did I say hi to you? Oh my God. You guys, my short-term memory is the worst. My short-term memory is the worst. Um, so far, it's okay. I have to say, it's very reminiscent. So Tiger's Abyss is asking how the deck is because he's been following it on Instagram. Um, so far, the deck is... Can you get out of my hair? Ow, oh, hi. Can you get out of my hair? Um, so far, it's very reminiscent of um, Interstar Oracle Magic Edition. You know what? I'm just going to... No barrette. There. I win. Oh my goodness. Fighting with this guy. Yeah, I would say it was worth the purchase. Um, they do have a planner out. Oh, the Universal Mind Oracle. Yeah, like if Universal Mind and if um, if Universal Mind and Inner Star had a baby, this would probably be the deck. All right. So let's go ahead. Ow, stop it. Let go. All right, we're going to pull a card for the day, and then I have to get going to work because I got to go pay him alone. Um, all right. So today is release. Top speaker to the side. Um, yeah, so this is the release card, and we're going. it's got the frog on a lily. It looks like there is a either some – that looks to me to be a flower. Some people might interpret it to be crystals around him. Either way, there's like a splashy type of halo. And then we've got um, what looks to be a lake and a moon, a very, like a rivery, a 
Riverscape. Yeah, I like the gold designs on the deck as well. And it's not, so it's not, it's a it's a very muted gold. Traditionally, I'm not super into gold colors. I like a more cool metal. Um, and if you are going to do something that's warmer, I prefer uh, brass or bronze. Um, even copper. Like if you're going to do something like that, I enjoy those colors. But it's more of, it's not like a bright yellow, super in your face gold. It's, it's, it's a very subtle it's a very subtle gold color. So we're gonna read the release card. Do, 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 do. They don't, oh, it's a water card. Oh, thank goodness it was right at the beginning. <laughs> so the release card, releasing. Releasing is a lot easier said than done. In fact, we can spend a whole lifetime trying to break free from our limiting beliefs or painful experiences. Sometimes we have an idea of where we want to go, so we compartmentalize and repress the things we believe are holding us back, but we still want to honor ourselves in our experiences. We just want to give ourselves new options of behavior so we're not stuck with the same old pattern. Spending a moment reflecting what is no longer serving you, what is old, stale, and taking up space within you, what would you do if these things didn't take up so much of your energy, what other behaviors and beliefs do you wish you possessed? So those are some good journaling prompts, some good thinking questions, or maybe some good follow-up tarot questions. Actually, that would be really, that would be kind of a really cool way to use this deck is to follow, like to choose one of these questions to follow up and do a tarot reading. Um, Amy, this is the threads, ow, the threads of fate. He stole my body pin. Oh my God. Um, the threads of fate. <laughs> the threads of fate oracle and it's on the ground um this is why people don't film with animals or children this is ridiculous and then it goes into um the animals and the herbs so today our animal is frog uh, a potent ally of releasing and repurposing um do, 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 do. sometimes we approach our shadow qualities as things to no no Sometimes we approach our shadow qualities as things to eliminate, but the frog teaches us that we can use what no longer serves us as fuel for the new. That's interesting. Um, come on, man. I love you so much. Why do you do this to me? You guys requested this. You requested a beaker video. Um, <laughs> how can you transmute what no longer serves you? How can you release it, but also do it purposefully? How can it serve you in a new way? Um, <clears throat> and then the herb today is comfrey, a long history of being an impressive wound healer, even to the point of being able to aid in resetting broken bones, earning its nickname bone set. I would have to read into that. Um, so any, I'm going to caveat any herbal advice you get from this book. Do your research before you just go ahead and throw a whole bunch of herbs down your gullet um, <clears throat> or put it on your skin or all that good. So like you do your, do your research because some while herbal medicine is fantastic um, and I love it and eventually plan on studying it in great detail. I'm actually looking into apprenticeships for when the shop is closed, but there are some drawbacks. Like mugwort gives you really great dreams, but they don't tell you it's really hard on the liver. Um, you know, like you're not supposed to use it very often. Also not supposed to take it while you're pregnant. And then there's a few like, and clove is really, it's um, supposed to have some really good antibacterial properties. Um, yes, go ahead and throw a link up for the deck, Veronica Jude, that would be beautiful. And then I'll put one in the, do in the doobly when I get to work later. So yep, while this one says it's, um, you know, it's a wound healer and can, aid in resetting broken bones, still go to the doctor if you have a broken bone. <laughs> so <laughs> not that I have to tell you guys that, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it because I'm reading this out loud. Um, we must process our feelings and show up for our rage and grief. Only after we've worked through our feelings can we begin to let go. Call upon Comfrey as an ally in processing your work so when you begin to release and integrate, it is settled. This is probably a really, bye Stella, have a good one. Comfrey, I'll bet, is really nice to do maybe like an essence water or something with. Um, even I would have to check and see how safe it is to inhale, but 
I'm sure you can get calm free oil somewhere, but um, if you don't have any pets that are sensitive to it, maybe diffuse it a little bit, kind of help you settle in, maybe do some work with it that way. Um, yeah, and then Epidote is the uh, stone for the day. So it says it's an amplifier, but we don't always get to choose what it amplifies, even if it sometimes amplifies that which we don't want, it is pushing us towards confronting the issue. Sometimes what we don't want needs to get a needs to get big enough for us to actually see it and take action. Part of its magic is being helpful in finding the root of something. So not only does it amplify, but it is also a guide in getting to the core of the issue. In that way, it is helpful at every stage of the process. Call upon Epidote when you need to support in uh, call upon Epidote when you need support in meeting the practical and psychological side of releasing. So there's a couple of herbs and herbs, animals, and um, crystals to take into, to take into, oh, bye Stella. Oh, Stella, oh my goodness. So there's a couple of things to take into account today. And then shadow, um, I would say shadow is transformative. If I were you, uh, or releasing, or I thought, yeah, releasing. Yeah, I would say shadow, it could be releasing and not necessarily releasing, but it's right, using using the release of shadow to evolve um, and kind of take it to the next level. Um, you know, kind of if you think about the, the life cycle of a frog from egg to tadpole. Um, what's, <laughs> oh my God, that would be horrible, but it would make you deal with it, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness buys epidote. There's no way this could possibly backfire. <laughs> like, that's, that's that stone. That's the stone's new nickname. There's no way this could possibly go wrong. Um, <clears throat> oh my goodness. Yeah. All the cards have foil effect on them, every single one, and they have them on the back as well. So it is a beautiful deck. The messages are awesome. There's a lot of jumping off I could do. I could probably go on and wax forever about, um, you know, releasing in the frog from, from egg to tadpole stage and um, even lotus pods and uh, water and all that good stuff. There's, there's layers and layers to be found in here. Um, and even if you don't read out of the guidebook, there's enough imagery on these cards to grab on somewhere intuitively and kind of go from there. And the look is very cohesive um, for the most part. Still don't know how I feel about the people cards, but um, <clears throat> I usually I usually approach them very conservatively and then wind up liking them anyway. So <clears throat> anywho, you guys, that is it for Threads of Fate. I will have um, some sort of follow-up notes at some point, I'm sure. Beaker says, oh, hey, he just noticed the coffee. He just noticed it, which is good because now we don't have to fight him for it. Um, so I'm going to get this guy and I'm going to put him away. And you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Bye, guys.